ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Faith Popcorn. Thank you. you made me look good. Okay. Hi. How many martinis did you have last night? I had two. Hello? I have to get out of here. These things are made for guys, you know that? It's true. So, um, let me see what I can share with you. I mean, beside that uh, the whole gender thing is having a big revolution, and uh, I think people are a little bit hesitant to, now why isn't this happening? Wait a second. Oh, there it is. It's kind of like a revolution happening. Um, we call it a revolution, and it's about how feminine energy fueled by money, and I think that's a big change. I think that women have money now. It used to be the little pink pill fueled it, but now I think it's like dollars are fueling it. Power and compassion. Compassion is a very big mix in there, will shape the decade ahead. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. I'm not going to be talking that long, but what I love is to hear from you, all of you out there. And if you would just like start to email your questions, I think we can have a fantastic conversation because I want to see if you're seeing what I'm seeing or are you seeing something a little bit different or is it harder than I'm thinking it's going to be. So one way that we figure out the future, and I would invite you to join our talent bank, we have 10,000 members Brainiacs, actually people that are really interested in something out there globally, and you can join us at faithpopcorn.com. Just come in if you have a really big interest. That is our really secret sauce to figuring out the future. And why it is is because we're, we're interviewing the talent bank all the time, and they're telling us what they're working on. And at Brain Reserve, and here's some of the team right here, we go 8%, 60%. You know, are they really going to be able to do that? And after a while, you get kind of a vision of what the future is going to look like. So I'll show you as we go through some of the things that our talent bank predicted. Also, we have trend devs in 126 places, and they tell us little things that help us predict the future. Like in Tokyo, they told us about a little teeny store in a subway station. And this store, when it ran out of stuff, ran out. It made people crazy, like a short line, you know, like, they wanted more, but they couldn't get more, so they bought the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And that helped us with some of our, you know, uh, positioning work and some of our future work. We said, that's a very interesting and iconic little model there, and how can we apply it? And then we have something called VOC, Voice of the Culture. So we have probably the, one of the largest female between Talent Bank and Voice of the Culture. Sometimes we call it VOH, Voice of Her, that we're interviewing people all over, but this is how we interview especially women. Michelle, you'll appreciate this. Late and drunk. So what we do is get to, not that she's drunk, but she's late. So we get to these, you know, people, we're interested because we need the truth. And in panels and one-on-one -on -one interviews, people don't really tell the truth. They tell you the truth they want to hear. So we're talking and creating these communities globally and hearing what people have to say and ask them to take pictures and ask them to keep diaries and asking them to tell us the truth. So that's another way. And then some people think it's a, that's really not true, a martini and a crystal ball. I mean, people think that. It's a little true, but not totally true. It's mainly the other three things. So I didn't say we have a 95% accuracy rate. Other people that studied us said we had a 95% accuracy rate. So we predicted these trends since 1974 when I opened my company. I opened my company, as many women do, on my credit card and in my studio apartment. And that's how I started Brain Reserve, on a vision with no money. And being a futurist, I guess I opened my company 10 years too early. So I hung out a lot, you know, zero on my W-2. But eventually people caught on to this idea that to really be an effective marketer, you have to see the future. So this is my, um, they say these are my 17 children beside my other two. I have two um, little girls, Chinese little girls, uh, Cece and Gigi, Cece eight. You see, you can't judge a person just by looking at them. 
thinking you can't like kind of look at them and go, oh, she's probably, I don't know, you know, however old, but never that she'd have an 8-year-old and a 14-year-old. So one of the things that we teach about the future is like don't assume. So this um, projective tool of our trend bank lets us see forward. And the way we see forward has been very, very effective um, because we look all the way out and then we kind of look back and figure out the timeline. The timeline is the tricky thing. Predicting the future is not as hard as you might think. But if you just look in that little corner, look at uh, Vigilante Consumer, look at Future Tense, and you can see how upset and angry people are globally and how it builds up. So we'll look at that like 12 years ago and we'll say, it's, you know, it's happening, it's building, and we give clients a future focus. So that's what we're about, applied futurism. So this is about looking ahead. And what's exciting is we're seeing actual evidence of the ascension of female power. So we're going to be putting a line right now in the sand on this date as we're looking ahead and to say that there's a tremendous, I want to say, shift, a tremendous shift in history, and it's the feminization of the global culture. So when you look at these publications and you realize you're looking at eight, ten, have you noticed everywhere you look it's about female power? It's no accident. So as we look ahead at some of these numbers, we're going to see it's not a sea change, but a she change. And it's like a tsunami right under the water coming toward us. And those who can leverage it and understand it, there's a lot of reward at the end of that, meaning money. So she's driving political change on seven continents. Look at this. I mean, this is kind of amazing, right? And she is the biggest emerging economy. Look at this. Bigger, her economy is bigger than the GDP of China and India combined. Mega. And you know, when we show these numbers, I have to say this, forgive me, I see a man. Ah! When we show these numbers, a lot of people say, this cannot be true. This is true. So if she's so wealthy and, and, and so big and has so much money, how come we don't talk to her? So I ask these questions in many boardrooms. It makes people uncomfortable. I go, why don't we talk to her? They say, we include her. We include her too. Do you include somebody that is so big in terms of their money and their power? Or do you figure out how you can talk to her? So she's out learning men. She is out earning men, and these are millennials in these states, even 80 cents on the dollar. 50% of billionaires in China are female. There's a major female movement in China. Major. And her female skills win. Look at this. Women dominate 13 out of the 15 job growth categories. And... In China, women are own more than 40% of private businesses, senior managers, China's doing very well, CEOs of large companies, look at this Malaysia, we're kind of at the bottom, and she's a better financial bet, so look at this, female hedge fund managers perform better, women 9% versus men, and female CEOs, as few as there are, <clears throat> outperform male CEOs by 28%. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. <clears throat> and boards with the highest number of females, highest percent of females, make more money. The return on equity, 53%. Return on sales, look at that, 42%. Return on invested capital, 66% higher. And, she's better in bed. And... She's a better investor. Look at what Warren Buffett says, guilty as charged. And this is the reason. Because Warren Buffett is a holder. And women become monogamous to their stocks and their investments. They hold. They hold. They're not jumpy. So that's why all these numbers are coming you know, toward us. Big numbers. She's invading the man cave. Look at this. 53% of smartphones she's buying. 60%. And think about car advertising. Or here's one, 
Go into any car showroom. Go into right here on Park Avenue, walk into Mercedes and say you want to buy a car. And you know what that salesman or saleswoman does? They kind of look behind you to see, where's the guy? I'm looking behind you too. Where's the guy? Where's the guy that's going to pay for it? There's still this idea that somebody else is going to pay for it when in fact she is buying 60% of the new cars in the U.S. and she's playing games 60%. You know how they always think that games are a male thing? Not. And 40% of fans of the NFL, MLB, etc., NASCAR. So, you know, kind of like the cliches about women, really to stick with them is really not understanding your market. All participating teams in the Olympics had females. It's pretty amazing. And look at this. U.S. Olympic first, more female than male athletes. And women took home 65% of the gold medals. So what does that mean? And the emerging domestic dads. So we had the pleasure of telling Walmart. And they did not like this. I mean, they could not believe it. I like when people go, I can't believe this. I mean, is that my fault that you can't believe this? I mean, really? So, I have to drink. It's this vodka, right? So, um, 20%, 20%, one in five fathers are the primary caregivers. And look at this. Dads like to pack lunches for some reason. So 50% of dads pack school lunches versus 44% of moms. 52% of dads are the primary grocery shopper. Is there any format around this? I mean, is anybody responding to this? And 4 in 10 mothers are the primary breadwinners. Look at this. Look at this. Gay parents, multicultural families, winner of 12 Emmys. Modern family. And we have clients that say, eek, we don't want to run any media on those shows. 12 Emmys. And stay-at-home dads, guys with kids, and this one, The New Normal, incredibly popular, doing very, very well. Adorable, right? How about this? 50% of, of um of adults are single compared to 22% in 1950. So there's a lot of heart, like, I don't want to get married, just speaking for myself. Divorce rate among 50 plus doubled in the last 20 years, and women 30 to 34 without children have doubled. So it's a choice, right? So one of my um, adorable clients, wonderful clients, Denise Morrison, said, you can have it all, but you can't have it all together at the same time. It was kind of a sequential thing. That's what I did. I worked, and then I had kids, and then I worked some more. So I want to show you this. Divorce papers, a new retirement gift. Let's run this video. Researchers at Bowling Green State University found that the divorce rate among those 50 and older nearly doubled from 1990 to 2009, while the overall divorce rate held steady. Sociologists suggest baby boomers may feel less social pressure to stay married. And for working women boomers, it may be easier for them to set out on their own financially. Women, in particular, uh, don't feel that they have to stay with someone they may not like very much simply because they need <coughs> to be supported. I mean, there was even an unmarried and single Americans week. You know, when you get your own week, you realize something's happening. And 40% of singles 21 plus never want to marry. And these are some beautiful people we've been interviewing. 85% of singles say managers expect extra work hours because they don't have children, which they're getting kind of upset about. And 80% are loyal to brands that support her, but they say marketers totally ignore her needs. That 80%, oh, this is really good. I love this one. 80% of wi widows fire their financial advisor within a year of their spouse's death. Why? Because of how he talked to her or didn't talk to her. And 73% claim advertisers just don't get her. So look at this, the evolved woman. So she's the 
growth engine. She's the proven power of feminine values. She's outperforming men, and she's emotionally and financially independent. So I think we have to really think about how do we profit from this? How do you show her the money? How do you clean up your act? How do you give her gutsy role models? How do you embrace her bilingual identity? She's part male in her thinking and part female. And how do you bend your business to her needs? Bend your business. Bend your strategy. Bend your marketing plans. So show her the money. So Jetworth, when we did this work, was kind of amazing. Rather than selling her insurance, we created incredible seminars where we helped her grow her own business. And this created about a billion dollars. Clean up your act. This Chipotle, now this is Stephen L. so amazing. Women buy the ethical bottom line when they buy a company and also when they buy a product. But also, I think we forget that women are buying the stock in the company that they're buying from. So it's sort of a double opportunity. And Chipotle really brought ethics to fast food. I don't know if you've seen this, but they've created a triple bottom line, financial, ethical, and life success. Look at what they did. Just wonderful. What Steve Ells did was buy, you know, McDonald's owned a piece of him, about 40%, I think. He bought his stock right back. He said, I don't want to be associated with somebody like a McDonald's. And as soon as he did this and ran that kind of ethical advertising about, you know, how this food comes to market, what happened was McDonald's started doing it, Burger King started doing it, everybody started doing it. Because this female that's buying from these, these, um, these uh, enterprises, they want the ethic in there. They want to know who's behind the logo, who can I relate to, who can I talk to, who can I believe in. I don't know if you've seen Makers. So wonderful, shouting the stories of multi-generational fighters. They're iconoclastic women who transcend finance. So I think we have a video here. Yeah. There are women who fight for something bigger than themselves, who have changed the world as we know it. They are the women who make America. Makers is a landmark digital and broadcast video initiative from AOL and PBS, featuring women whose pioneering contributions continue to shape the world in which we live. From the high profile to the everyday groundbreakers, they are all here. Pretty amazing and incredibly popular, and we were actually supporting this. So Nike, Sweat Beauty. So when we went out and we, we created this $4 billion division for Nike, they didn't have a women's division. When we went out to talk to women about just do it, they said, that seems very sexual, just do it. I want to really look good in my workout clothes. Kind of basic. But when you go to gyms and you watch women work out, a lot of times they're like kind of looking around seeing how their, you know, back looks. So that was our insight. So we created this Nike Sweat Beauty to speak to her power and her compassion and gave them $4 billion. And yet when we said, let's do maternity, because they make such great clothes, they said, nah, that's not a performance sport. I guess none of them had ever had a baby. So, and with Jiffy Lube, what we did was we stood in Jiffy Lubes. You know, they change your oil. And guess who was driving into the Jiffy Lubes? Women. 80% female. So we put the toilet seat down. We redesigned the, you know, the, the formats. We did four different formats. We took out the Hustler magazines and put in some Els and Vogue's. We told the guy when, you know, you pull up not to stick your hand across her lap and look at the odometer and wake the baby up. And incredibly, we rethought everything, and they did absolutely brilliantly. So bending the business to her needs really can help. So I'm suggesting, and I'm dying to hear what the panel says, that you can lead this revolution, not just follow it, not just notice it, but actually lead it, and admit you have an opportunity, that's where it starts, and accept that your business is not invented with her in mind, invented, invented with her in mind, and ask, 
how would you in reinvent banking? How would you reinvent banking if women were your only customers? How would it look different? And finally, connecting, nurturing, these are girl words, empowering, inspiring, reinventing the future. And thank you for being with me.